Hi, uh, English Nomad here. Um, for those who uh, are new to the channel, I'd like to uh, welcome you. I've uh, noted that I've had quite a few people um, subscribe recently since my last upload. So in today's video, I'm just going to do a news update, a channel update, if you will, on um, exactly what's going on. And it has been several weeks since my last video. So I felt it was appropriate just to uh, bring my subscribers and viewers up to speed with some of the things that have been going on um, since my last video. Um, the first thing that I'd like to, uh, to let you guys know about is, uh, is I've moved house again. So um, I was living close to the city and uh, that was a property I was renting and uh, I always had the plan to move out at Easter um, but some things were happening um, at work which were out of my control um, so I wanted to stick to the plan so I vacated that property and a friend of mine a very good friend of mine was kind enough to let me stay at their place um, and that was so that I had some time to allow the situation that was playing out at work to resolve itself. So that's the next piece of news. About two months ago, the management team of the company that I um, worked, past tense, worked for, um, undertook a structural review or started a structural review of the uh, team that I worked for. Um, I work in quality assurance, I'm a technical specialist. Um, in the area of fabrication and welding and uh, uh, my particular role was very heavily involved in supporting our projects in uh, quality assurance, quality systems audits and uh, providing support to the oil and gas um, business unit of the company that I work for. Um, they decided that they wanted to make some changes to the structure and as a result, my position became surplus to requirements. Now, for those who've been following the channel, you'll be aware that it was always my plan to quit my job in October anyway. Um, I was just waiting until I clicked over the, um, the milestone to collect my long service leave. But as things have played out, um, I was made redundant and I was given a, a redundancy package. And uh, that redundancy package has given me the, um, a buffer, um, a financial buffer to allow me to take probably six to 12 months on the road without having to stress at all about money. Um, so I'm very satisfied now that I can, I can start planning in earnest for my big lap of Australia. So I'm quite excited about uh, what this development actually means in terms of me being able to leave sooner and to do the preferred route I want to do. And I'll come to that um, in, a, in a very short while. So the next piece of news, uh, which is more related to my camping setup, for those that are familiar with the camper that I've built, um, I'm going to be relying predominantly on solar to provide me my power needs for charging my cameras, running my fridge, lights and etc in the camper. Now, while I've been here in the southern suburbs of Perth where I'm staying at the moment, uh, the vehicle's been parked on the drive and I've been getting good sunlight every day and I've been monitoring my batteries and my batteries are pretty good based on the, the current I'm generating from the solar panels. Um, but I do appreciate that there are going to be times when I'm going to be parked up in an area where I'm going to be in shade or it's going to be a cloudy day. I'm not necessarily always going to get ideal conditions to keep my batteries charged. So what I decided to do was buy myself a small generator. I looked around in the market and it seemed fairly clear that Honda were the, 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 everyone's first choice when it comes to small um, generators, portable generators that have an inverter and provide 
good stable power source for charging things like laptops, cameras, running my battery charger um, on the camper. So I went on Gumtree and I found a, a, an Honda EU 20i, which is a, a very well known um, 2 kVA generator. Um, the people I bought it from, they bought it for their caravan. I think they said they'd run it for about 30 minutes. It was surplus to their requirements and I picked it up at a very good price. You know, So I'm very, very happy. It looks like brand new. And I'll put some photographs um, just up in the corner here so you can have a look at the uh, generator and see what I'm talking about. So for my next piece of news, um, I've bought myself a drone. Now, this is going to be added to my camera equipment setup for the, uh, for the channel. And uh, the purpose of this is basically to get really good aerial footage of the places I visit, um, aerial footage of the campsites, and um, obviously it's going to give me another tool to be more creative with the uh, video content I'm going to be creating on my Round Australia trip. Uh, this is a, a DJI Mavic Pro Platinum. It's, uh, it's a very small, compact drone. It folds up to a very compact size. I'll just uh, fold it up so you can see how small it packs up to. Um, unlike uh, the Phantom, which I, I really did want to buy, um, but it was considerably more expensive for the, uh, for the Pro model. And also, it doesn't end up being as compact as this. Um, with space and weight being a premium in my setup, uh, this is obviously a really good addition to my, to my um, camera setup to, uh, to, to, to get the sort of footage that I want for the channel. So uh, I, I hope to uh, put a couple of uh, videos just up, um, just up here. I'll put a couple of videos up there um, where I've been playing around with it, just getting used to how to fly it and some of the controls. It has its own controller and also it syncs to my mobile phone as the screen device so I can see what's happening at the camera end of the drone. So I'll show you some footage um, while I've been playing around with it and uh, you, can, uh, you can see the, the sort of quality of the footage I'm likely to get. Um, so that's that. Um, what I'm going to do now is just bear with me for a second. I'm just going to um, I'm just going to zoom down onto the table, and you can see how I've got my maps laid out. And what I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you very quickly. Uh, what the plan is um, this this particular book I'm just moving out of the way is my um, campsite book it's, it's going to be used for me to uh, plan my stops on the trip so what I'll do is I'll show you what my plan is so in two weeks I'm going to set off from I'm just down here at the moment near Rockingham I don't know if you can see that I'll just move my map up a little bit so I'm just down here, which is uh, south of Perth. I'm going to head up the uh, coast, stopping along the way. And my plan is to call in on Shark Bay, because I've not seen this part of the, uh, the northwestern coast of um, Australia. And then continue up to, uh, up to Shark, so the Shark Bay, then Coral, Bay here, um, Exmouth, see some of this coastline up here which is supposed to be beautiful. We've got Ningaloo Reef which is famous for the uh, whale sharks which are, a, um, which are basically a, a, a very large shark that eat plankton. They don't, uh, they're not a threat to humans, in fact you can actually go and swim with them. And then I'll continue up the coast on the uh, main highway here through, probably not stopping very long around Carafa and, um, and that area because I'm quite familiar with it, having, 
been up there for work. And then I'll continue on up the coast to Broome. Broome will be uh, my last major town stop for a while. Um, once I head east uh, along the Gibb River Road. And then I'm going to continue over the top end of Australia. So I'll just pull my Australian map here. So my plan is to go, um, I'm here, I'm going to continue, I'm going to continue to to go from Kununara into uh, Northern Territory, Catherine, I'll go up to Darwin, spend a couple of days up in Darwin, uh, and then some time in Litchfield and Kakadu National Park, and then continue heading um, east into Queensland, which is over here, that's the border, um, into Queensland, and time dependent, I may go up to Cape York, um, and then head down the coast, just move this, head down the coast of uh, Queensland, eventually ending up in Brisbane down here by about October of this year and that's I guess dependent um, on a lot of factors. Um, I don't have any particular time frame that I have to work to. That's better, you can see me now. I don't have any particular time frame I have to work to. Um, I'm going to be fairly flexible. And hopefully along the way, I may be able to pick up a little bit of work, casual work along the way, just to, uh, to help uh, keep my savings account looking healthy. Um, my plan, as I've said, is not necessarily to... I'm certainly not going to look for work immediately. Um, I don't believe... I have any need to, so, uh, but I, I would like to concentrate on doing more video content on the trip. So the channel is definitely going to transition away from technical videos relating to the camper to more travel videos. So you're going to see a lot of videos um, about the places I visit, some spectacular photography and videos. Um, some updates on how my dog and my cat are adapting to uh, life on the road and um, and generally hopefully some fun stuff as well so uh, you know it's a very quirky place Australia you know there's a lot of really quirky spots around and a lot of um, characters that I will meet on the road and hopefully I can bring you some of that in uh, in my video content going forward so you know, it's going to be more entertaining than informative, um, is, I guess, my vision for the channel going forward. So I hope all those people who've been following stay with me. There will still be some technical videos because I dare say I'm going to have issues along the way that I need to resolve with the camper. It hasn't been fully tried and tested yet. So, um, so it's a it's going to be a suck it and see scenario in terms of does everything work and does it work exactly as I, um, as I envisaged when I uh, set off on this journey. So, um, so, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a, a bit of a tour around the camper with some of the jobs that I've been doing um, since, um, since the last video. I've made a couple of improvements and I've finished a couple of jobs off, and um, you can you can see that in the next um, section of this video. So uh, I'll uh, catch up with you uh, at the end of the video. Okay, so uh, I'm just outside here um, with the uh, camper just to my uh, right. So uh, I'll just uh, give you a quick look at some of the little jobs I've been doing over the last couple of weeks to finish it off. So one of the things that I have done is I've made a 
uh, bracket to mount the uh, ladder on the back of the door just to, uh, to to have it so it's stored more safely it can't rattle around so uh, it's very secure on there it's, it's got a bracket which uh, is uh, fixed to the door and then there'll be a you can just see this bungee here this bungee goes round and fastens around here on that loop uh, with a toggle and then that holds it firmly in place there um, against the door so uh, so that's one of the jobs I did just to uh, to, to store the, the ladder more safely so we'll just uh, go and stick our head inside the camper and uh, just like the camera adjust to this light So as you can see, I've um, finished off the uh, the cupboard doors, the missing cupboard doors. So those are now in place. All of the cupboards now have doors. So uh, that was one of the jobs I did yesterday. And uh, I must admit, it looks a lot better having all of the cupboard doors on now. Uh, just... Uh, I ran out of plywood when I was uh, when I was doing the uh, the, the doors, and uh, I didn't get round to going and getting any more timber for a few weeks. So uh, anyway, let's take a look inside. So one of the other jobs I've done is this uh, this storage shelf on the back wall for my condiments and bits and bobs. I'm probably going to put things like oil and tea and sugar and stuff like that in there to free up some of the space in the cupboards below. Um, it's handy to have all that stuff up there as that's going to be my uh, cooking spot. I've also um, put my cooktop on the top here. I'm secured with a bungee so that's where it's going to live when I'm on the road. It's very very secure. It can't slide around. I've got an anti-slip mat underneath it so it's uh, it's going to be uh, a good place for it to go while I'm in transit without it getting damaged and uh, yeah, sliding around inside one of the cupboards. So uh, I did that. You can see that I've got the uh, the bed folded up, so the mattresses are behind the uh, the bed frame there. You can't see the mattresses, but they're tucked up behind there. And on the back wall, you'll see the other um, job that I've done, which is this bookshelf. I uh, didn't want to take all of my books with me, but there are books that I want to have, and most of them are related to my trips, or so map books, camera and photography books, maps, and uh, that sort of thing, and a bit of general reading as well. So I wanted somewhere where I could store them, where I had easy access to them, and so I made this uh, bookshelf, which is just some uh, plywood and some uh, some nice jarrah. And uh, it's just all oh, the books are held in place with bungee cord. So it's very simple. One length of bungee cord which goes backwards and forwards through those, uh, through those rails. And then you just slide books in and out. Pull them out and then... So they're, they're very secure there. I can also tuck me mag light in there which is handy place to have it you know if I need to grab a torch at night it's right there where, where I can get it uh, so yeah that's uh, one of the little jobs I did as you can see now it's very bright in here but uh, I'll just I'll just as you can see the interior is looking really uh, nice now with the cushions I've uh, been sorting out the storage. I'm going to. Uh, I've been doing some of the packing today. I've been going through my tools and where everything's going to live. I'll give you a, a bit of a, a tour around again once I've got it all packed out, so you can see how I've packed it out. But essentially, all the 
kitchen items are in the kitchen end basically food pots pans all that sort of stuff i've got my personal toiletries and towels and stuff in there as well at this side underneath the sink and in this this area here is uh, is mostly kitchen and then in this space tucked up tucked up this side here uh, in the corner down here is um, is stuff like spare gas bottles i'm not going to be carrying a large gas bottle i'm going to be using i'll pull one out to show you i'm going to be using that type of gas bottle for my cooktop and i bought quite a lot of them in bulk they were on special offer at uh, one of the camping shops i think they, they had them for marked down to about eight dollars so i grabbed five of them which they that they'll last for quite a while because this cooktop's very efficient and i'm not planning on cooking over elaborate meals <laughs> so yeah, they should get quite a bit of uh, use out of these gas cylinders. I also have the uh, the gas cylinders for my uh, jet boil, which is uh, uses a isobutane fuel. I've got quite a few of those as well. So that's what that end of the kitchen cupboard's for. Just, just stick it. So I've got so I've got a, still got a bit of room in there. I want to I want to put some more stuff in there. Sorry about the brightness, it's very sunny out there. So I'm using these plastic tubs in these spaces here to store my food. That way I can pack it, I can pack those tubs and pull them out and just get at what I need rather than to pull pulling everything out. Uh, so seems to be the most efficient way of doing it. So yeah, that's uh, that's where we currently are and very exciting times ahead. I'm probably gonna be um, hitting the road in the next couple of weeks and uh, I'll start um, producing some content on the trip itself rather than uh, about the camper so um, as always please uh, please tell me what you think hi Mike back again I just wanted to um, spend a couple of moments I'm going to do this on a lot of my uh, new videos I'm calling this uh, segment my personal reflections and i just wanted to share with my audience and my viewers some of the reflections i've had on the changes that have happened in my life recently um redundancy for a lot of people is is a, is a i guess is a, a really big deal in terms of feeling that they've lost a big part of their life uh, for me, um, I make no secret of the fact I wasn't happy in my job. I wasn't happy in my job for a long time. So I view the redundancy more as uh, me getting my freedom back. Um, the company I work for, the organisation I work for, um, I started working for them um, six and a half years ago and they were a different company. They had a, a culture which was completely different to the culture uh, of the company that I left two weeks ago. And um, I have to be honest and say, I was suffering with a great deal of stress and anxiety in that job. It was a constant fight and a battle uh, with people, personality clashes, and um, it, was, it was a challenge. And um, leaving the company was, was sad in a way but you know all things come to an end um, but leaving was a huge weight off my shoulders um, I don't think that it's a job that I would want to do again um, whether it was for the company that I worked for or another company I don't believe it's a job I would want to do again I think I uh, realized I wasn't cut out for the uh, cut and thrust of quality assurance and the constant shit fights that comes with that. Um, you know, when it comes to compliance in any organization, 
you're constantly fighting internal battles to get people to do the right thing and 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 really it leads to a lot of stress and um that's all I want to say about that. I, I, I honestly don't feel any um, anger or um, bitterness uh, about being made redundant. I actually, they, they did me a favour. They brought forward um, what I was going to do anyway. Um, so I was actually secretly dreading the next six months because I was counting down the days. I literally was counting down the days to when I could hand my notice in and leave my job. So them making me redundant in a big way did me a favour. Um, so, you know, one thing that I take away from this is, you know, as one door closes, another door opens. I know it's a, a bit of an old cliche, but it's very true because I'm hoping that this will... Um, and I feel very positive and encouraged that it will um, change my life. I'm going to embark on a completely different lifestyle, um, traveling, living a more nomadic lifestyle, and um, seeing Australia, meeting other travelers, and hopefully building some kind of a, a, an income out of doing that. Living nomadic, living minimalistic, means that I can keep my costs down, the cost of living down to a to a, a level where I don't need to earn a corporate salary anymore. You know, giving up the corporate world, giving up that corporate salary, giving up some of the benefits that comes with having a secure nine to five job um, has its own benefits. Um, and being someone who's a creature of habit, I think it's going to be good for me to uh, live a life which is more, um, f more sort of less stable, less predictable, having a few challenges that I'm, I'm not used to, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So I just wanted to share that with, uh, with my um, subscribers because I'm hoping that the people who stay with the channel and follow the channel and join the channel will appreciate um, my personal insights and, and what's going on with me. Um, the channel is, um, is, is going to be sort of about my adventures and also what that means to me. So, uh, you know, please, uh, please carry on following me. And um, if you've uh, enjoyed this video, please uh, like the video. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe and click the little bell icon so that you get the, uh, you get the notifications when I uh, put new content, new videos onto the channel. And um, as I always encourage people to do, please leave comments, tell me what you really think. And uh, I look forward to uh, sharing um, my next part of my adventure with you very soon. Uh, the next video, by the way, will probably be in, in about a week's time when I, as I start to get the vehicle ready for my big adventure. So I want to do a bit, bit of a tour around the vehicle as it's packed out and where I've put everything and why I've put, why I've put stuff where I've put it. So um, that'll probably be my next video. So uh, until next time, Mike... Signing off. See you later, guys. Bye.